So we're actually gonna work on a build for zip tie drags. The cage is just tacked on and we never finished welding it. For some reason our welder uh, it just won't work well and I don't know if it's the electricity in the shed or if it's the actual welder. Welcome everybody to the Black Flag YouTube channel for our very first video. And if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you came from Instagram because that's where most of you have probably found all the stuff we've been doing working on. And you probably recognize this the Ratty Chevelle back here. So I'm in my home garage, but today we have a project we're gonna work on. It's another one of those time crunch projects. Some of you may be doing zip tie drags out in Tucson, uh, a little bit less than two weeks away. So we're actually gonna work on a build for zip tie drags. A few years ago, the Chevelle was actually in the $3,000 Hoopty Challenge. We're up in the staging lanes for, for the zip tie drags to see if we get in for the $3,000 Hoopty Challenge. Let's see. Look at the other side. This side's pretty bad. In line six. Oh man, this corner is Wow! I'm gonna put my head through the corner right there. This is probably should. Man, that is dark. This is really bad. This is really bad. I want to let him in on principle. You know, on principle, that it's a Chevelle. It's clever. I want to see that it's a Chevelle. That's true. Give us a second, Jenny. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. And it may have been like the slowest car there. So we started on the Miata car and it's like been in half done territory for a really long time because once it like started and ran and drove, we just started driving it. And uh, we didn't finish the cage, we didn't finish the welds, we didn't make it look nice or anything. So we are going to this week sort of finish it, get it in like nice looking state. So that's what we're gonna do today. Also, if you are on this channel, we are giving away t-shirts every video this week. So all you have to do to get a t-shirt is make sure you're subscribed and comment below what you wanna see this week on the channel. So what do you wanna see us work on? What kind of tech stuff? Whatever it is that is gonna be helpful for you, comment down below in the comments and we will pick one of those comments and give away a t-shirt to one of those people today. So do that on this video and we'll let you know who wins the t-shirt. Also check back the rest of the week because we're gonna give away a t-shirt every video this week. So like the next five videos are gonna be t-shirts. All right, here's the Ratty Chevelle that you all may be familiar with. It is getting ready to get torn apart for some changes. So we took off those rims and it just looks like total junk now with some 15 inch nasty tires on it. There's really not much redeemable about this thing. We'll talk about that more later though. So we're gonna get out of my home garage and head to the shed, which is also called the hack shack and we're gonna get to work on the Miata. So see you there. <laughs> is the shed otherwise known as the hack shack and it's kind of a mess been working on cleaning it up some <clears throat> but 64 is there more on that later donor vehicle for the 5.3 that's going in the Chevelle and there's the Miata cart the Miata cart was bought for $200. It was a wrecked car with no radiator, a missing front end, and a bunch of missing parts. This is the car I've always wanted, and we're gonna cut it up. Cut it up. And then we chopped everything off of it. Then we built a cage and basically built a street legal go-kart. We lucked out and this thing actually runs really, really good, besides all the smoke that it makes. And the cage isn't done. The cage is just tacked on and we never finished welding it because the thing was so much fun to drive that every time 
were over here, we would just drive it around. So I've taken it on like hour long trips and I've driven the thing all over and it's a lot of fun to drive and it runs really good. The other issue that we're having here, for some reason our welder uh, it just won't work well. And I don't know if it's the electricity in the shed or if it's the actual welder. So that's one of the things I have to do today is find out if my cheap welder is the problem or if it's the electricity. So there's cheap welder, MIG setup. I'm a proponent of if you don't know how to weld, obviously get the nicest welder that you can get. But I always like, when I started, I just got like a cheap Craigslist welder. You can spend like a hundred bucks and get something that you can learn on. So if I am going to test the welder, I need some scrap metal. All right, I'm gonna head back up to my parents' sign shop because I know the electricity works right there because they have a welder that works well there. And if it doesn't work there, we know the welder's the problem. This has always sounded like that. I bought it on Craigslist for 99 bucks. So I figure it's slightly better than like a Harbor Freight. Seems like it's doing okay. Last time I used it down there, it worked really good for about two, two joints and then it started just like worms. And I don't think I came up against the duty cycle of it. It must be that electric down there because these are like the best welds I've ever laid down with this, so. Probably got enough juice to spot weld stuff down there. All right, so it is confirmed that the issue is not my cheap welder. It's the electrical service down there at the shed. Thought I was a pretty bad welder for a while and it was just because the electrical service wasn't allowing the welder to function right. All right, back down at the shack and we're gonna get this place set up so that I can do some welding, fabricating, and finish that cage. The rest of this video is fairly in depth on how to build and fabricate a roll cage. It doesn't get too technical and the math is not too difficult, but I promise if you stick around, there's burnouts at the end. All right, finally ready to get to work. Sometimes you spend more time cleaning getting ready to work than you do actually work it. Here's what bars we have left. So when we started, obviously you wanna check the regulations for whatever sanctioning body you're gonna be like using. So we started, so we started with the main hoop here and then we did the back bars. That gives you a four, four point across bar, obviously. Then we did the halo bars and then the bars go into the front, which don't really matter for whatever sanctioning body. But what we need for this to pass, well, I don't know if it'll pass tech or not. Basically, we just need the crossbar here and we need door bars on it. And that's all we need for this cage to, I guess, be done. I'd like to do a dash bar down here somewhere because I think that would add some rigidity. Oh, and we also need we need the bars that come off here towards the center. Definitely what we're doing, crossbar, bars back here going towards the center, off the main hoop, door bars, maybe a dash bar. And then I wanna redo this rear end because I don't like the way it looks. All right, I'm gonna come over here to our scrap metal and see if we got a piece that is long enough. And it looks like definitely not. These are all really short pieces, so we've got to cut a new one. There's our pieces up there. All right, here is basically where that bar's gonna go. The mistake that I made last time is I, I wanted like a little kink in the middle of it, but it just looked weird when I was done. Maybe just a bend right in the middle. So when you get a tubing bender, of any kind before you can do anything you have to bend a test pipe it might be kind of hard to see but there are little hash marks all over this test pipe we took a pipe and we made half inch marks all the way down it and then we picked a half inch mark and we let that be the collar of the bender so as you bend it you use these little marks to measure where the bend happens and then we took those measurements and i actually wrote them on the side of the tubing bender. 
So what I know is that the bin starts two and a half inches after this collar on the tube. Bin. There's a collar right here. It's the end of the bender. So if I'm going to start a bin, I'm going to make sure where I want the bin to start is two and a half inches after this collar. A 90 degree bend happens over 8.75 inches. So this is a 90 degree bend from here to the end of this bend is 8.75 inches. So you know that that's the distance you're bending. So anytime you're taking a measurement, trying to figure out what to do when you're bending a new piece of pipe, you're going to want to use those measurements. I have my four foot pipe, some rough measurements. I took, I actually added a little bit of leeway, like, you know, an inch on each end, because you'd rather be have to cut extra off than not have enough when you're bending a cage. There's my center line point. Two and a half inches is where I want the collar to be because the bend is going to start there. And actually, I just moved it a, a little bit over. So this is just a, a little bit more than two and a half inches. It's not an exact measurement. It's just a guess. I've got at least half an inch or more on each end to work with if I'm off. Once my little kink is in there, I'm going to measure out from the center to the ends make sure it fits where I want it to fit. This is the bender we use. It is just the most inexpensive Speedway bender. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to what this bender is, where you can get it. I like it because it's portable. The bottle jack that it works off is junk. It leaks fluid everywhere. You could just go get a cheap $15 jack and replace this one, it'd be fine. We've also written this extensive article on how to build a cage. It talks about a lot of the stuff that I talked about today. I will also link that down in the description. Here is our four foot pipe, and this is the collar I was talking about right here, this spot right here. So I'm lining up my mark with that collar. Then all I do is work this jack. All right, now it's tight. I have an angle finder with a magnetic base. You can see that that angle finder is pretty close to zero. That just gives me, helps me keep track of how far I've bent this pipe. I'm not going to bend it very far, so we're going to we're going to go now. See, there's my there's my markings on my tubing bender. All right, we're going to crank down on this. So I'm just going to step back and look at that and see the curve in that and if that's what I'm looking for. And I really don't know. I'm going to have to stare at the car. See what I don't know if is if I want the if I want the curve to be on a flat plane this way, or if I want it to kind of match the windshield. And the last time I did this, I did it with the windshield and it looked really stupid. I didn't like it, so I think I want it on a flat plane this way, not sticking up, because it'll look better from the side. We're at five degrees. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and get it to 10. All right, we're at 10. I think I'm gonna stop there, loosen the tension on the jack. Tape is your friend. Sometimes those bins, they play tricks with your eyes because they get like a kink here and a kink here and the middle's here. hash marks on the end of the pipe where I'm going to cut them. I always put my cut lines on the center line of the pipe and when I'm doing something like this a little bit of leeway so I can cut my way into it so I'm never cutting short because once I put the notcher on there that notcher if it centers on the center of the pipe then you're gonna have your cut out in the right spot. Hopefully that makes sense. All right next thing I'm gonna do is notch it and I'm gonna figure out the angle on the notch I want it pretty close to flat. All right, here's what I'm talking about. I got my pipe laying flat on the table so that when I notch, this is the correct angle for the notch like this. So it'll be like a 90 degree or whatever angle you want to call that. So I'm going to come over here and check because I want that to be in the same plane as this. But where it's going to match up, it starts to kink down just a little bit. I'm gonna have to take that angle and turn it just a little bit, or maybe I need to turn it this way. We'll figure it out. Okay, this is set up in the tubing, or er, in the tubing notcher. 
what I've done is there's a zero right here and I have clocked it about two or three degrees this way because the bars on the top aren't parallel, they go off left and right slightly. So that'll help compensate for that. And then because the bars go down about like that, what I've done is I have taken this and I have rotated it. All right, when I test fit this, it is just about right exactly how I want it. I'm gonna do the next ones and we'll see them on the car. I made one of the mistakes that I make a lot and that's, I didn't factor in enough space. Even though I thought I fudged it by like a quarter of an inch every time, I've still got a gap. The way you can fix this is when you tack it on and you can get a ratchet strap and actually like ratchet the halos together. Using that ratchet strap pretty, pretty much put that exactly where I want it. All right, so what I'm doing is notching the tubes just a little bit for a mark because I'm going to clean these. Next up, we are going to do the door bars. So I think they're going to come right here to here. So the rule is door bars have to pass between the shoulder and the elbow. This is one thing you might need, an angle finder. We're gonna go 32 degrees. I may have completely nailed this last cut. It's gonna be perfect. Okay, that's close, but I want that bottom bar to be parallel. So I gotta do just a little bit more trimming. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit, the simple angle over here, I'm gonna take a little bit off that end. That should let it fall into place. It's not perfect, but it'll get fixed. What you didn't see in the rest of this video was to get that pipe right for the door bar. I had to cut an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch off the notch at least half a dozen times. I cut out the whole hour of me just taking that notch in a sixteenth of an inch at a time so that you wouldn't be completely bored. But that's what it takes to build a cage. Now, as promised, here is your Miata Kart burnout. <laughs>